So the point is, when you share those stories, when you share where you are weak, but God is strong, it gives people hope. And it get, helps them to realize, oh, I can be honest about where I'm weak. I can be honest about what I'm struggling with. That, I think, is a very different thing. I think for so long as Christians, we've pretended like we're perfect and like we don't fall or that we don't make have mistakes or struggles or that God's not working in our lives. You know, we don't want to talk about, I'm really struggling with my attitude right now. Well, yeah, because God wants to get this out of me. And I know that's what he's working on in me. You know, does that make sense? Because yeah. for me to grow, I have to overcome some things because God can't trust me with the next thing if I don't overcome this first. How can I trust you to do this next step of maturity and this next liberty, this next um, responsibility if I, I can't trust you with this characteristic? And God does the same thing to us. So when we share with other people and we become transparent, you ever heard the word transparent? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, a long time ago, it was a bad word. You know, he's, his motives are completely transparent. Well, they were saying the same thing, meaning his motives are bad and it's transparent that they're bad. You can see it. Mm -hmm. But if we are transparent and honest and say, I used to struggle with anger. Now, if I never told you that, you'd never know that. Then if you have problems with anger, then you can go, oh, wow. I would have never imagined that she used to have problems having anger. I have problems with anger. Wow. God, that means you can help me. That I'm not alone. That I don't have to hide this, even from you, God. So our first principle is for your family to withstand the storms of life, you need to build a foundation rooted in God and in his word. Listen, folks. Rooted in God and in his word. That is what we have to do. The church is part of that process, but it's not rooted in the church. The building that... Do you understand? I mean, I, I know that sounds so like opposite of what most people would say. And I'm not saying don't attend church. What I am saying is it's more than just attending church. Mm -hmm. It's about rooting your family and your marriage in the word of God and in, in the presence of God. It has to be personal because it will. I'm telling you, it doesn't work for us for it just to be a tradition, for it just to be a country club. It didn't work for you. That's why you went away from it. Coming to church wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. You had to have an experience and a need for God personally. So we have to guide those children into principles and relationship with God so that they learn, they start learning how to make those decisions, how to walk with God, the power of God, the need of God in their lives. Um, Sister Glass, she told me, she said, I, I have not seen children like your children in I can't, she said, I've not seen, I've seen good kids, but I've not seen boys like your boys. That's a wonderful and compliment. And it's a huge compliment. And she, and I, she said, you can tell that your relationship with them and their relationship with God is more than just because you're preachers or preacher's wives or you're, you know, she said, you can tell it's in your home, that it's in everything you do and every choice you make and every conversation you have. That I, we bring the principles of God back into it. When you have an attitude, how does this attitude line up with the Word of God? We're making a choice. What is this, how does this choice line up with the Word of God? If we're going to buy a movie. We're going to buy a game. We're going to wear clothing. We're going to, whatever we do, how we spend our time, we take care of our bodies, all those things, they have to be aligned with the Word of God. And it, it brings depth to them all the time. And they can't get away from it so easily because it's not just my mom and dad made me go to church because it's deeper in them than just attending church. It's not a social thing. It's not a traditional thing. It's a life thing. And they see it in mom or dad. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Did you know that you can be deceived by listening and walking away and not doing you can hear and hear and hear and go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, and walk away and forget and be deceived that what you're doing is okay. It's like a person that goes to church. You didn't apply it right away. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like a person that goes to church, and they listen, and they act the part, and they, uh-huh, mm -hmm, yeah, amen, amen. And then they walk out, and they live a life like they want to live. It's a good typical what we'd call hypocrite. Mm -hmm. They are deceived that they're okay. I'm a good man. I'm a good Christian. 
I go to church on Sundays. But there's nothing in your life that shows the fruit of being a Christian. There's nothing that you're doing that shows. If you believe the house is on fire, are you going to act? Mm -hmm. Yes. You're going to do something, right? right? If you really believe there is going to be some kind of action, if you believe something is important, you're going to do it. You're going to do something about it. Don't deceive yourselves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. It's like looking at yourself in the mirror. For he beholds himself and goeth away, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso, do you understand what that's saying? You look in the mirror and your hair is a mess, and your tie is crooked, and you got something in your teeth, and you walk away <laughs> and you think, oh man, I look great today. <laughs> That idea. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, this is the, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. He is obedient, he has a spiritual memory, and he perseveres in it. Isn't that great? Okay, so why do you think both hearing and doing are necessary? Let's just make it really simple. Do you want your kids just to hear you? No, you want them to do what you <laughs> okay. want them to do. We expect mm -hmm. that, don't we? Yes. Okay, so as parents, we expect to be heard and obeyed. Because if they don't obey, they didn't truly hear, did they? Right? They didn't right, really, they really know. hear. Okay. So why is it necessary to hear and obey to build a spiritual foundation? So spiritual foundations are not just built on principles, are they? They're not just built on the concepts of the Word of God. So what is a foundation built on then? If our foundation is weak, maybe we should look back at what actions we've built it on. And if we want it to get stronger, if we want it to become more firm and resolved, rock-like, then we have to change our behavior and build a different foundation. I think our flesh doesn't, I think it goes back to basically we just, our flesh doesn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Think about this. You know you need to clean the house and you have all day mm -hmm. with nothing to do. And you know you need to clean the house. You know you need to do laundry. You know you need to vacuum. Then your mom calls. Says, hey, your aunts just came into town. We're going to be over there in about 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm telling you what. There's you nothing faster. <laughs> Why? Because there was yeah. a reason, a to, reason do to do it. Uh -huh. So do oh, we oh. ever, do we ever... Put ourselves in a position that God has to, does God ever have to put us in a position of tests and trials to get us motivated to do things when simply if we would have just obeyed and been obedient and done it, we would have matured ourselves and disciplined ourselves and just done it, that there's a possibility we would not have had to go through maybe a trial that we went through. Because we knew before the trial that God was wanting us to do something or and we had to go the long way around. Finally, we go, oh, this is what it was about in the beginning. Mm 